So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the limit box. And the limit box is going to be used to hide certain portions of your point cloud or to show others. And you can animate the clip box and make some really cool videos, uh, you know, showing cut throughs and uh, section views and things like that. I already have a point cloud that's inside of 3D Studio Max here, and I'm just moving it around here. I already did a video on this showing you how you can import and reposition a point cloud. So I have this particular point cloud on the ground plane. Although it's not a requirement, it often makes it just easier to work with. In order to bring in or use the limit box, what I'm going to do is go here on the create tab and just over here where it says the helpers tab, you have to go to the drop down and then go to cloud to max. And there'll be a couple of options which show up here. I'm only going to do the limit box in this particular video. And if you click on limit box and I'm going to move back and click on the center of where you want the box to appear and click and drag. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag and I'm going to make this box about that large. And so I've almost encompassed this point cloud here about the same size and I'm going to right click to stop. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start positioning this. So using the W key I'm using and uh, selecting on the controllers here for X, Y and Z. And you can see that um, sometimes what I do is I'll just go to a top down view. I'll choose the R key to go to uh, scale and I'll just scale the box to the size that I want. And the W key I'm going to reposition here. So moving to the front, I can just position the limit box where I need it, make sure it's centered. I'll go to a perspective view now. And you can see it's fairly well encompassed. So the effect that this has is really just hiding certain parts of the point cloud. So if I take the Z controller here and I move the box down, you'll see that it starts to break into this point cloud, uh, which is great if I want to, you know, just show uh, sections and look through the ceiling and that sort of thing. No problem doing that. I'll keep this box the way it is for the moment. But of course, you don't want to see the box in your viewport. Sometimes you just want to keep the effect, but you want to hide it. So in this case, if I click on the clip box and I hit the number two, so I go to the modify tab here, it says evaluate if box is hidden. So that's an option that if I click on and then I hide it in my viewport, you'll see that the effect is still there, which is great. So for animations and things like that, if I just want to uh, have a section that's open and I don't want to see the box, I can definitely do so. The other thing that I can do, I'm turning it back on now, I'm going to select it, goes back to the modify tab, you can invert. So I can invert the effect. So in this case, now I'm only keeping what is outside the box and not what's inside. Uh, the inside is now hidden. But I'm going to stick with what I have for now and keep this and we'll come back to this in a minute. I'll show you that you can actually create a whole number of different limit boxes and try some different things. So I'll try another box here and what I'm going to do is just move this from the top down view over to about the middle and like this I'll move it upwards and you'll see what happens here. All right, I'm just going to move this up. Oh, I'm actually moving the point cloud, I think. I don't want to do that. I want to move the, oops, I want to move the clip box. So let's do that. I'm going to move this up and you'll see that now I'm keeping the inside of this clip box and the inside of this clip box. So you could have a whole bunch of different clip boxes hiding or showing different components of your point cloud. And I'll let you experiment with that. But, you know, if I just wanted to break into the top here and just show the top and maybe move it a bit forward. Uh, maybe I need to make this a bit larger. Let me go like that. I can make it larger both in the X and Y direction, something like this. So you can combine these and I think you get the idea of what it is you can and can't do. The last thing that I'll show you, I'm going to delete this here and I'll create a very quick animation with this clip box over here. So let's say, for example, I start with the full home here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this clip box all the way down and maybe all the way back up. So I've got, uh, I'll just use a default 100 frames. Well, maybe I'll just go all the way down. So I'm going to go to auto key and I've got the box right now. So I'm just going to key it in this position just above the uh, roof line here. Then I'm going to go to 100 and I'm going to slide this down and go down to, well, let's say I go right down to the basement, maybe do something like this. So now when I press play, You'll see it's just cutting through the point cloud like that. Okay, and of course, if I stop this, I want to hide the clip box. So I'm going to go back and oops, I just unexpectedly renamed my point, my clip box, uh, but it doesn't matter. I can just go back here and I'm going to go uh, 
evaluate if box is hidden. So I'm going to hide that now. And now when I press play, I get a nice little animation. Just like that. Now I've hidden the navigation cube and I've also toggled off the uh, text that's usually up here. And those are features that uh, you can get in the clouds to max menu. But this is basically how you use the limit box in 3D Studio Max with the clouds to max plugin. Thanks.